everybody. Good morning, everybody. I'm freaking out. We're about five miles from Kennedy, from Kennedy Space, Space, Space Center. Center. And I don't, I'm sure there's a cool name for this strip of bridge or road or whatever this is. But this is the ocean. Yeah. We'll look up right over there. Kennedy Space Center. I see the NASA logo on the side of that building. This clock, clock is the second most viewed clock, second to Big Ben. That's super cool. Guys, look, we got our tickets. And then we had to go back to the car because we forgot our all the extra batteries for the cannon. And Which will be needed because this is like, this is an eight or, nine, eight or nine hour experience to do everything and this is gonna be a long video. So I don't apologize because I've literally, I almost started crying, we walked in and so we had to go to Will Call first to get our tickets. But we walked in and saw that NASA, and I almost started crying. There was a person dressed up in an astronaut suit. <sighs> Here we go. Are you ready? Oh my god. I cannot believe this is happening. Exploration begins here. You have to march everywhere you go. Okay, march. Do you feel like we're on a Disney Magical Express? This is like a Space Magical it's Express. It's like a mixture between the CTA. It really is, yeah. These kind of look like CTA buses. The older ones before they renovated them. I am literally shaking <laughs> in my heart and soul. My name's Barry. I'll be taking you to the Center 5 Complex via Launch Pad 39. B, A is out. Everybody knows why, right? No. No. Why? There's a launch on um, Wednesday. They're fueling the thing. Wow. You know how embarrassing it is when we drive by and they're fueling and it blows up? There goes another bus, bus load. From launching the first Americans into space to launching humans to the moon, we've launched and carried the dreams of a nation. Just about everything you're going to see out here will appear smaller than what it actually is. Due to the wide open space around them, I want you to be aware of it because I'm going to mention it again later on the tour. Brand new launch tower for the FLS. To the right of the tower, brand new yellow crane. And we just finished putting it together. That's what's going to put up the five service arms on the tower. They're going to orbit the Earth a few times, go to the moon, orbit it a few times, come straight back without landing. It's a test one, just like Apollo 8 was. Except this crew is going up for 21 days. Longer than anybody's been up there. When I get around the bend, you're gonna see 39A, the most famous launch pad in the world. All 12 astronauts have walked on the moon, but from one place on this planet. Now you're looking at 39A. The space launch system is an all new heavy lit rocket. That will be going space for the first time. We can take the best of all of our little white rocket. rockets and combine them with cutting edge tooling. This is pad 39 of the Kennedy Space Center. I was a launch controller here when from this very spot, man took off to fly to the moon. Why choose this as our goal? And they may well ask, why climb the highest mountain? Why 35 years ago, fly the Atlantic? Why does Rice play Texas? We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. Was the design flawed? Has safety been compromised? Tough questions. And we spent one and a half years redesigning the spacecraft so that no astronaut's life would ever be at risk because we overlooked something or because we could have done something better. Through those doors, you'll find the firing room, launch control, just as it was on December 21st, 1968. Ready to see history? All scrollers, wheelchair guests, and hearing impaired guests, please use the door to your far left. Apollo 8 successfully orbited the moon, and the astronauts returned safely to the Earth. 
It's a big old rocket. So I think everybody is nervous. Nobody knows what to do. So this is a, a real astronaut van, which is a special to use transport to bring the astronauts from where they were like over here out to the launch bin because the launch bins were three miles out. Look at all the badges from all the different missions. Wow. That's super cool. Sarah. I'll roll myself with this. I, I can't even handle it right now. Look at that, there's a NASA symbol. Look at those seats. This is, this is where the astronauts are here. This is where they put their jackets before. <laughs> Look, they take them off, they go in here, and then before they go into the rocket they take their jackets. I'm gonna give you a quick guided Peter Rambles tour about something I think is amazing. So right here is one of the last steps of the lunar module for the Saturn V rockets. Now this is a rocket, that's where the, the astronauts would be. Um, and that's what would bring them home. That's the only piece that would actually come back to Earth. That is the lo a lunar module which would stay on the moon and that would be underneath this, in this giant stack. But what would happen is this would detach and we'd use those little rockets there to spin around and attach the tip of that cone to the top of that lunar module and then reposition itself to blast and land on the moon. So you see that is, this piece here is this thing. You can see it detaches from the rest of it, spins around, and then takes that cone, tip of the cone, and attaches it to the top of the lunar module, which is that, and then it would reposition and continue to, to the moon. This is amazing, and we haven't even done a third of today. We've just taken a bus around and seen this beautiful rock. If you get a chance, obviously we are so grateful to show you all through this video what there is to offer here at the Kennedy Space Center. But if you're in the area, if you're local or here visiting and you love science, you just love rockets, anything like that, come out here and see this because it's nothing. I've looked up videos my whole life. I've looked up photos my whole life. I've watched movies my whole life. All I've wanted to do was come here since I was like five years old. And it is amazing to finally be here. None of it, just, none of it does justice unless you come out here. Letter written to President Lyndon B. Johnson by Chief of Staff, Jim Jones. Oh, wow. The actual block, block one hatches of the Apollo 1 scape, spacecraft. Alright, the Heroes Walk. This is the same bridge that Michael Collins, Neil Armstrong, and Buzz Aldrin walked to get into their rocket. Look down. Oh, 30 stories high. How cool is this? And what they say, this is the white room, right? That's what the advertisement back there says. So this is the last final systems checks and everything before they went into the spacecraft. We are all on board. And now we're going into this movie. That is incredible. I wish we were alive. Like when Sarah leaned over, it was like, it's super, isn't it super weird? Like when this was going out and this launch happened, her parents were six and seven? Seven and eight. Seven and eight years old. As soon as the Eagle reappears, things begin to go wrong. 1202 means the Eagle's onboard computer is overloading. This means Houston is blocked, unable to make navigation corrections or interpret the data coming from Eagle's computer. 90 seconds of fuel remaining. Now less than 200 feet, and the Eagle is too low to safely abort back into orbit. I 
We've got to understand that as a people, we need to stretch. We need to reach beyond our grasp. We need to strive to do things that seem impossible because in the accomplishment of them, we move society forward. Look at this, the Alan Shepard's Apollo 14 spacesuit. You see on the bottom there where it says that all, all the moon dust makes it all gray? It's dark and dirty looking from the moon. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Let us know if you know or anything about aging rocks and materials because Sarah wants to know why, how we know that this is 3.7 billion years old, that piece it's of like moon rock. It's like paleontologists of moon. Unless it's just... I think it's the same science and same procedure. Carbon dating, I think is what it's called. Let me look at the carbon decay of inside the rock. There's my nerdy head coming out. I did, I did go to engineering schools and tech schools even though I'm a computer scientist. So this is the Apollo 14 capsule. You can see the helicopter here going to retrieve it. It landed in the ocean with Alan Shepard. It was named Kitty Hawk. Who was it? Let me give all the respect that's due. Alan Shepard, Edgar Mitchell, and Stuart Rusi. This is the actual capsule that they were in. You can see all the burn marks from re-entry and maneuvering it back and everything. So this is actually the bottom side, if you've never seen anything like this, is rounded out with special seals. It came in from outer space, landing in towards Earth with the, like the butt facing down, because it could, it could accept all the heat, but that's why this discoloration is here. It's from the extreme friction and heat of coming through the atmosphere at high speeds. And then you smack into the water? Yeah. Well, there was, um, it had, what are those called? Parachutes? Yeah, it had parachutes. Here is one of the three custom suits for the Apollo 17 astronaut Gene Cernan, who's actually the last last astronaut to walk on the moon. No, no astronaut has been back since then. And then we've got the moon rover here. This is lunar sample 70215, comma 287. What does it feel like? We're touching the moon. This is the coolest looking coffee mug and then I went to go open it. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Like, oh, spacey. Okay. It's very spacey. <laughs> well, well, well. Look what we have here, Sarah. It's bigger. It's bigger and a little bit more fancy, but this is just like the same thing that they have in uh, Tomorrowland. Look at that. Here at uh, Kennedy Space Center, you have to be really careful about like the Times Guide and see what's going on with. You want to see everything. With everything, because some of the things have five or six show times, and other things only have one or two. So right now, like the Eye on the Universe, we there's only two showings today, and we missed the first one because we were at the bus tour. The bus tour. So we're gonna go now. And right, here is the astronaut encounter theater with our 3D glasses. They're fancier looking than like the park. Should we go really close? Whoa. They cool? Yeah. Sometimes. Does that do anything for it? Huh. It makes it clear. That's right. I'm all squinty because we just left that really dark theater. Um, Sarah fell asleep during it a little bit. Shh, don't tell anybody. But we're about to go see an IMAX and I doubt I'll be able to show you any of that. But I wanted to show you this amazing painting and little tribute to the International Space Station. And really like makes you think about how like it's amazing when we can actually work together as a as a world. So as you know, the International Space Station is the size of a football field. Fifteen nations, five space agencies, one extraordinary goal. Here are the flags of all fifteen nations that came together to build this. Yeah, you're right, actually, a lot of them are in World Showcase. Let's see, Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, Norway, UK, US. What are we, are we at Epcot here? That's us. Thank you. We got a coffee, but I can come back for a refill. And so can you get in your pop. So here's where we're going. IMAX 2, a beautiful planet. Whoa! Flown further for longer. This is an Aryan? 
<gasps> Sarah, we have to come back. <gasps> we have to come back. <gasps> we have to come back out here after. Okay. Are we going the right way? A Boeing, Boeing's spacecraft. There's, that's an Orion over there. Oh man. Uh oh. I think we went the wrong way. Are you ready? Are you nervous? You know what we're doing after this, right? Yeah. Space shuttle don't line us. Who were they? That was awesome. And this song is awesome. And it was very like, like a, a like a fresh reminder of like, it's so awesome. All of it. All right, so now that I can take a moment and breathe, um, we're in this little hall, and this is the future. This is what not just NASA, but all the countries and all the companies. This is what they're working towards. They've already been they've already been using this. As you can see, this is this is one that was used. You can see the burn marks from the return from the reentry. But this is the Dragon SpaceX Dragon. What I find interesting is Boeing has been like a long term. This is the Starliner, and that goes on top of the Atlas V rocket. This is what they've been talking about in all the tours and everything. This is the SLS, the Space Launch System. So this is what NASA is developing now, which will is the replacement to the Space Shuttle and the Space Shuttle System. It is launching in 2020. They're building, they're building this right now. That's what we saw when we were on the bus tour. It's, this is this is where it's at. This is the the famous Orion Orion spacecraft. So that, that thing that we showed you earlier that was on the Saturn V rockets that housed the three astronauts that look like the inside of the mission space that was super small, this is what is replacing it. This is one of my happiest moments of my life. <laughs> I never knew if I'd ever see one. But you were here before. No, I wasn't. No, I thought you got lost here. Michael got lost here. I oh, thought, okay. I, got lost here. I thought that that was the joke when you were just told no. not to get lost. Michael got lost here. Okay. No, Michael, my brother got lost here when my parents came here. I think it was before I was born. Yeah. Because if you guys didn't know, Peter was born in Florida. I was born in Plantation, Florida, right by Fort Lauderdale. Lived there for like a year, I think, not even. No, I think a little more than that. But you're still really young. Yeah, because I don't remember any of it. Look at this. So, that is one of the greatest things I've ever seen. But this is still pretty cool. This is a real to scale replica of the Hubble telescope, which people, I feel like, don't give enough credit to. Like, it is an amazing feat of engineering, and it's led to so many discoveries and everything, but this thing is huge. stars and we're down this like spiral way to get down and it's like a timeline of all the space shuttle missions describing each one and this cool it's like we're walking back down the earth here are all six of the space shuttles the description the, the official name we've seen from going to Washington on our school trip in April. I don't remember seeing that though really I don't think I did Friends and heroes. So we didn't show you the last part of that, which was like the memorial for the Challenger and Columbia shuttles. But I will have to give them lots of credit because they did it very well. I like the. I just wanted to point out the end of that memorial was like they showed the emotional recovery and the physical recovery, and then they touched point on the return back to work, like the next shuttle flight afterwards. It happened, I think, a year and a half later, but. 
Like, they you have to keep like, moving on. Whenever there's something that happens, literally the second after it happens, it's the road to recover. Wait a minute, wait a minute. He looks real, real familiar. I think we know his, his relative. Look at this magically perfect soft serve vanilla cone I got. And they only gave Sarah that much chocolate because the machine acted up? One. So they gave her chocolate dip? This is what I wanted. Chocolate dipping dots. Well, you could, why didn't you say that? We could have gotten it. It's also raining now, so we need to get over to the, to the place. Ready? Is it really good? Did you try both already? So happy, yeah. <laughs> So you, Ch double chocolate, two different kinds of ice cream. All right, Sarah. This is like the, third the beginning. The be oh! You can like see your own eyeballs. <laughs> How close? It's like the beginning of the end right now, isn't it? We're getting ready. We're waiting to get let in for their 12-minute movie before the Heroes and Legends presentation, which is like the Hall of Fame for astronauts here. And then we're gonna take a walk through and look at all these these here rockets. This is the rocket garden. And then we've pretty much done everything that we could and or wanted to do today. But we want to thank Kennedy Space Center. They uh, actually they let us come out here and check everything out to share with all of you. So thank you so much, Kennedy Space Center. We really appreciate it. And I guess it before when Sarah was was I think taking pictures of something that like. We're really glad to show everybody all this stuff, but it by no means does it justice to look at it in this video. So if you're ever in the Orlando area and able to come out, definitely come out. This is the first thing I think that I want to bring somebody or people to outside of the, the bubble of Disney. Exploration is really the essence of human spirit. Look at this, this is super fancy. Yeah, all A's and B's. Look at this, it's the Mercury Mission Control Center. And look at this classic NASA sign. When's that from? Oh, it's. Oh, so it would have been like over there or somewhere. That's super cool. Look at this amazing. So this was in the first and our hundredth. And possibly Mars. And possibly Mars. And look at this. Mercury, the original Mercury 7 team. And look at this. One of the Hall of Famers must have just recently passed away. Richard Gordon Jr. Alan Shepard, first American in space. Alan Shepard Jr. The spirit of space. There's actually a high school right by our hometown. The high school's called Shepard High School. This is a beautiful Hall of Fame. Look at all of their faces, it looks names. Like the year that they came in. Right. But then also as the patches of the of the missions that they were on. Alright, to finish off the day, the Rocket Garden. Last stop. Last stop. And we go home. It's been a great day here. Look at this big old rocket. Look at all these rockets. Look at this rocket head. <laughs> Did you have fun today? Yeah. It was great. Let's go this way. <laughs> Look at we match. Yay! Um, we're home now. We're home. It's Sunday night now. Yeah. Did you have a good day? I had one of the best days of my life. Top time. I, I think I said something else today that like you guys didn't know about Peter, but Peter has always wanted to be in the Air Force, um, but he couldn't because Peter actually has two titanium rods in his back. Yeah, it's Maybe scoliosis. we'll show you his scar one day. Yeah. Um, so he wasn't able to serve in the military, mm -hmm. and 
his dream of astronaut astronaut ship being an astronaut um i don't know could it i mean not that that, that was like your ultimate dream i know the air force it was, was one more. of them right so that it was just like something from peter's childhood that obviously meant a and lot i've always to him. loved that stuff yeah so it was like super special it was a big day for me peter said it was like one of the like top 10 days of his life yeah so, so thank you for following along with that um yeah. i know Sarah's gonna do a great job tomorrow editing this and there's a lot of stuff to it so i'm sure she's gonna I'm do i'm gonna try and make it like manageable. fun and artsy and not too geeky and freak out but not geeky but just like we want you to go for yourself and yeah. see it too so i know we so. mentioned it earlier but thank you kennedy space center for having us come out it yeah. was spectacular was, i want to remember this day on my deathbed yeah like, we'll have to go back and see stuff when they're not preparing for launch because we there's a couple of things we couldn't do yeah um, go back for a launch because like spacex is launching a rocket on wednesday yeah. night so one of the pants was closed um, but sarah will put down in the links below some links for nasa.gov and for the space center um, visitation yeah. hours prices and programs that they do because yeah. they do a lot of programs too yeah. but with that it's good, it's to, good be to be home we know what our goals are we know what we hope to accomplish and believe me, it's the most exciting and challenging assignment we've ever tackled at Walt Disney Productions.